Yo, what up everyone? Today I got another weapon guide for you guys. This time we are taking a closer look at the Officer Carbine. In my opinion it is one of the most underrated rifles in Hunt Showdown, but before we are taking a look at its stats, I'm gonna show you the Carbine's biggest secret. The number one issue people have with Officer Carbine is its recoil. The trick with the Carbine is playing special ammo, high velocity ammo to be exact. First, this is what the normal Carbine recoil looks like. It is super random and it doesn't have much of a kick to it. It can go to the bottom right like you see here, sometimes goes to the top left, top right, it just goes all over the place. Now let's compare high velocity to normal ammo. Like you can see here, the high velocity ammo has much more kick to it, but the kick only goes upwards after every shot, which kinda negates some of the random aspects that the carbine has. Like you see here, due to the weapon kicking up, it's much easier to hold it on target. The carbine still has like the random recoil pattern to it, but having that extra kick on high velocity ammo makes it much more controllable than on normal ammo. Okay now, what traits do we need on the carbine? Honestly, this is more of a trick question, the carbine doesn't require a singular trait. You can buy Steady Aim for the Officer Carbine Deadeye, which helps a little bit but doesn't do much. Apart from that, there's not a singular trait which is needed while playing Carbine, which makes it the perfect starter weapon for a fresh hunter. And in my opinion, gives it the upper hand in comparison to the Winfield, since the Winfield heavily relies on having Iron Repeater and Levering. The only thing that you have to keep in mind with the Officer Carbine is, even though it has a very high headshot range of 126 meters, it does deal lower damage than the Winfield over range. The 2 tap range is about 35-ish meters, so you wanna aim for headshots, which, considering the fire rate, is not that hard to do. Okay, another important thing on the Carbine is, the secondary, because we have a low ammo count of 14 reserve bullets on the carbine by itself, we have to look into alternatives that we can ammo stack with our carbine. So you just type high velocity up in the search bar, if in case you didn't know that, works with every ammo type. And now we see we have three different variants. We have the Nagant pistol, the Bornheim and the Officer. They all run high velocity ammo. My favorite is the Nagant pistol due to its high reserve ammo count, but honestly, you can also run the officer, you know, double stack the officer, then you have like overall 28 bullets in reserve. Very nice if you just want to spam. The Nagant pistol is better for fanning. And then we do have the Bornheim, which also runs high velocity. I personally wouldn't recommend it because it has the lowest reserve ammo pool and on top of that also deals the lowest amount of damage. With the Bornheim you have to tri uh, triple tap, with the officer and the normal Nagant pistol you can double tap. So, honestly, I would either run the Nagant or the Officer while running the Carbine, obviously with high velocity. Okay, let's talk about some traits which will make your life easier. Even though I said earlier the Carbine doesn't require any traits, there are still some perks which you might want to consider. The first one is fanning. Especially if you run the Nagant pistol, it's a very solid pick to give you the slight edge in close quarter combat. On top of that, if you're worried about your ammo count, since we are playing special ammo, you might want to get Quartermaster and then double stack up on, for example, the gun pistols with high velocity ammo, which increases your total reserve ammo drastically. Like you can see here, just those two Nagant pistols give you 42 reserve bullets. We then, on top of that, add the 14. That makes it 56 reserve bullets, which basically makes it impossible to run out of ammo, in my opinion. If you're still worried about ammo, you can always bring an ammo box or two, but honestly, it's not really needed. Okay, enough with the theory crafting, let's jump into some gameplay. I will do some play-by-play -play commentary as usual to tell you guys what I'm doing and try to highlight the carbine's biggest strengths. A little summary here, I just spawned an ironworks and making my way over to fort to grab the double clue. Once I arrive at fort, I bump into a team. And I think this is a great example how good the carbine is at close to medium distance.
Give me here some footsteps to the right. I immediately go areas to see if I can get a quick pick here. Here you can see that the 5 minutes 20 velocity is actually clutch at medium distance. You barely have to lead your shot, which makes entry picks fairly easy. I start crossing the road here, since on the opposite side there's much more hard cover to play from. I start pushing here and trying to get close, because that is in my opinion where the carbine outshines most other rifles. Again, you see how I basically do not have to lead, especially with high velocity, you aim on the head within like 40-50 meters and you get a kill. And on the finishing blow here, it's a great example how good the carbon's fire rate is. Before he has even located me, I already shot at him three times and even though I missed my two initial shots, I was able to headshot him before he was able to shoot back. I think overall, you just saw here how versatile the carbine can be. You can easily pick people at 50, 60, 70 meters due to its high velocity, but afterwards you can keep up the aggression, get into like close range like 20, 30 meters and then fully abuse the carbine's fire rate to your advantage. Uh, in the second game I'm gonna show you guys the carbine strengths, which is in my opinion compound fights. But first of all we end the nighttime map so let's turn up the lights real quick and then start the commentary. Quick summary here, I'm arriving at the shuttle, the banishment is done, the second banishment has happened in Scupper Lake, so we have a full on server fight here within the chapel area. My first goal here is to keep my distance to the bounty team and make use of my high velocity to get an initial pick to then snowball off that. A lot has happened here right now, but first of all my plan worked and I could use the carbine's high velocity to get an easy 60-70 meter headshot. On top of that, the person that I saw in dark side, you know when I saw the lightning, was below me and was actually right there in a the bush. But since I have a really high fire rate, I flashed him and then just abused the carbine's insane fire rate to spam him to death. After picking up two kills on the initial bounty team, and seeing in scan there's another team, I decide to push the chapel to hopefully finish the fight. The basement team does have Necromancer, which made me not want to push down there. Since if I don't get the pick here immediately, they can easily get up the whole team without me being able to stop them. So I do another scan here, see that somebody is isolated, and try to pick my 1v1 here, which in my opinion is the carbine's biggest strength due to its fire rate. A good tip here. Somebody cooks a nade in your face and you have a shotgun or a high fire rate weapon, just push them and try to kill them before they throw it at you. Sadly I couldn't see him since he was standing behind the bush, so I immediately take cover here and continue the 1v1. Here's another good example how he can make use of the carbon's fire rate. First I shoot here the lantern since I know he's standing behind the wall. But due to my insane fire rate, I'm ready for him to pick the corner as well and get the headshot. Now that I've picked two people of the boss layer team and one team of the new approaching team, I do another scan here, see that I got an isolated enemy to my right and gonna try to pick the 1v1 again. Also, like you see here, it's always a good idea to check the map when you play a double bounty to keep track of the other bounty team if they're like coming towards you or if they are running away. Just so you can plan ahead. And again, I'm making use of my good fire rate here. I'm shooting the lantern because I thought he was inside the grave area. He wasn't, but again, always use the carbon's fire rate to get barrels, lanterns, anything that gives you an advantage, honestly. I do another scan here, I see there are only two people alive, so I'm deciding to take another 1v1 against the person that is actually on my floor, like outside the compound. Here's another good example how you can make use of the carbine's high fire rate, even at long range engagements. 
I missed my first initial shots here, but I can just hold the same angle and wait for him to peek and get the headshot. But you can see here that the carbine in itself, completely raw without any traits, is a great weapon to fight and duel other rifle players. I picked up another second here, I see that the boss lair team has revived and that the second team, the scupper team, is arriving as well. So I'm deciding to take the fight first against the scupper team since they are closer to me, since the chapel team is bunkering down in the lair, so they are not of interest currently. While I'm doing a little rotation here to get all the enemies lined up in front of me, it's a good time to highlight what we just saw here. Back to back, medium, long range and even like very close range, the carbine gave me the advantage and never made me feel like I was at a disadvantage. The only way I could have lost here in my opinion was if somebody had a shotgun. But you know, any rifle loses against a shotgun within 10 meters. Here again, even though I was fighting two enemies at the same time, the fire rate saved my ass again. I could double tap the fellas. Then I got kinda lucky. I think that tier 2 hunter there just DC'd, but wouldn't have changed much in my opinion. Again, great illustration or great example how good the carbon is at close range battles against other rifles. Simply by having high fire rate here, I can shoot first, aim punch the fellas and give her no chance to shoot back. Now that only the boss layer, the chapel team, is left, I'm voting to the end of the compound since they are both currently in the main area, or the main layer. So I wanna go down there and try to isolate 1v1s and win again with my fire feet. I got kinda lucky here that I found a flashbang, but what you can see here, even at this very close range and even though I hit the immediate headshot on the black coat, I could have just double tapped him as well like you saw there. I wasn't ready for hitting the headshot, I just shot twice, which is, especially in this close range, insanely strong. I'm gonna wrap this up here. The last guy kept running away from me and eventually I got him killed with one of my death traps, but Let's just go on to the next replay. Just to mix it up here, I'm gonna throw in a Carbine Dead Eye game. In my opinion, those two guns play exactly the same. Obviously the Carbine Dead Eye is a little bit better at the medium to long range, while the Iron Sight version is much better at the close to medium range. But honestly, like I said, they both don't require any traits. I'm not using any traits here. And like you will see, you don't even need Dead Eye scopesmanship because it's built in into the weapon already. I'm sieging the boss layer team and there is a team third partying me from the world border. But let's jump into the game and I will show you why I love the carbine so freaking much. Like you see here, due to my insane fire rate, I can basically outshoot my enemies simply because I can't match my fire rate. And again, the cabin is really good at ego peeking and holding an angle even after you get tanked. Because most guns in this game cannot match its fire rates like I said earlier. Really. And just like that, we were able to free ourselves out of a very shitty situation in which we probably would have died with most weapons unless I had like a Dolch P or maybe a Crowning King. I'm gonna do a quick skip here, I just rotated around the shoreline to get on the other side of the compound to have like a better area to fight from. Small tip here, especially for you solo players out there, when you play Carbine you wanna bring it against solo v trios. Always make sure before the fight starts, you have like a fair distance between you and the enemy. 
I would prefer like 40-50 meters, so you have the chance to get a pick on them before they overwhelm you just by player numbers. And this right here is a great example how useful the dead eye scope can be. I voted a little bit, they lost track of me, and due to the carbine's high velocity and the dead eye scope, I get the easiest headshot of my life here. Also, what you can see here, there's basically no sway on the dead eye scope, so you don't really need steady aim, even though you can buy it and it will help a little bit, but. Honestly, just save your points and buy something else. Again, you saw here like how the Dennis scope helped me to spot someone through the bush, line up the headshot and finish her off and we are in a 1v1 here, so I'm gonna turn up the aggression and do what the carbine is best at, pick a 1v1 against the rifle player and just dominate them with fire rate. Even though I got a little bit lucky here and they stepped on top of my concertina trip mine, even without that, I could have easily two tipped him here and it wouldn't have made a difference. But what do we learn out of this fight? You saw here, with a carbine dead eye, you can very easily utilize medium to a little bit further long range ish, I wanna say, without getting any disadvantages of only running compact ammo. Because headshotting with this scope, no sway, high velocity, fairly easy. In the next replay, we are gonna continue with the carbine dead eye. It is one of my favorites, to be honest. And I'm gonna show you guys how insanely strong staying scope with this weapon is. Since it comes with a built-in dead eye scopesmanship, it means it is very forgiving when you miss a shot if you combine that with the insane fire rate, you can still win your aim duels at range even after missing a couple of shots. Here I'm third parting a gunfight, I'm being sneaky and try to get the jump on someone. You see how I'm basically missing almost every shot here, but simply making up for it with the fire rate, she cannot even react to it until I'm basically out of ammo. If she stands still and tries to shoot at me, she's a dead man. Now I hear her teammates coming for the rescue, so I'm falling back and try to isolate one we wants. And again, I have super high fire rate, so I can afford to miss a few shots. And she has to respect me anyways and take cover behind the tower. If I had a Mosin sniper or anything like that here, I miss my shot and they know they have a little window in between my next shot in which they can shoot back. When I have a carbine, this window doesn't exist. This again is a great example why the carbine is such a great weapon, especially in combination with the dead eye scope. You see how I'm basically hit scan within like 40-50 meters? while still having insanely high accuracy, a scope, and super high fire rate. Find any other gun that comes with all those perks without having to buy a singular trait. For the last game of this video, I'm gonna show you guys a full-on server fight in the middle of nowhere. It's really hectic, but due to having a carbine, I managed to come out ahead. Yeah, sadly, I whiffed all my shots here, so I had to fall back behind the railroad tracks, but that is when things start to get hectic and I run into a random fellas who I still to this day have no idea on whose team she actually was. Luckily we're able to outplay him by having insane movement. Overall, the Ruby movement guide coming soon for close quarter combat battle. Little teaser, but let's continue with the carbine guide. Here I'm kinda wiggling myself into safety to the first hard cover I can find. From there on, we're gonna start carbining back at our enemy. This one here is a great example. Obviously, the first headshot was really nice. For the second kill here, 
My carbon is out dueling even the things about Dodge due to it having less recoil than the Dodge, which makes it much easier for me to line up a headshot. Here I get a little bit lucky that another third party is arriving and shoots my enemy instead of me this time. Bless the RNG gods. I effectively hide behind the tree here to heal up and finish the fight. Now that that team is dead, I immediately start rotating to the next good hardcover, reload my carbine and continue the fight. I'm gonna speed this up real quick. All I'm doing here is like looting bodies and using my carbine's high fire rate to keep them at distance and deny them from pushing me. Overall, same principle as usual. I'm in a 1v2, maybe 1v3 here, so I'm keeping my 40-50 meter distance until I get a pick. Now that I know where at least two of them are, I'm pushing the building and using my fire rate to basically bully them and pick up two quick kills here. And again, like I said many times, my fire rate just outfired, outshot the T1 hunter there. Even though he hit me and I didn't, I could just stand still and hit the headshot after he tagged me. While looting all the bodies, another team rolled up on me. I do a quick rotation. Again, take a long range engagement here due to my insanely high velocity. Can line up an easy headshot here and finish the fight. That is it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the little guide here and I hope I can convince you guys to give the carbine a chance. I'm gonna summarize again. What are the benefits of playing carbine? Insanely high fire rate. Fairly easy control when you add high velocity bullets. Doesn't require a single trait, which makes it the perfect fresh hunter rifle in my opinion. And even better than the Winfield if you manage to hit headshots. So just give it a try. Let me know what you think of it. Are you more like a carbine dead eye kind of person or like an iron side kind of person? Because with a carbine you can do both. See you in the next video. Have a good one.